Today I'll be demonstrating the new features in version 3.1 of Rebel and the recent update 3.1.5. There are some game-changing features for digital art, such as the HSL UV color mode and color grids. I'll be demonstrating how to use these features coming up next. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. So let's dive into the new features of Rebel 3.1 and 3.1.5. Let's go ahead and start with the most recent version, and that is 3.1.5. The first update is to the color filters, and we can find those by going to filter and then choosing color filter. I'm applying this color filter to this layer here with the banana on it. This will apply a color tint to that layer. Now, if we look at Rebel 3.1 side by side with Rebel 3.1.5, then you can see the way that the color blends with the layer underneath has been improved in the newer version of Rebel. The next improvement is to tool tips, and tool tips will appear anytime you hover over a tool. For example, it says transform above the transform tool. In older versions of Rebel, if you tried to click on the tool above the tool that you have selected, the tooltip would get in the way. In version 3.1.5, that tooltip disappears immediately as soon as you move off of the tool. Another great update is the ability to drag and drop multiple files at once, so you can bring in multiple brushes, papers, and color swatches. If you choose to import them through the import dialog, you can bring in multiple files there as well. In version 3.1.5, there's an option to invert the pen tilt. When Wacom devices use ink, the tilt may go the opposite direction. This will invert the pen tilt direction. Now there have been some other bug fixes and minor tweaks. If you wanna check that out in Rebel's blog, you can do that. But let's go ahead and move on to the game-changing new features that were released in Rebel version 3.1, such as the HSL UV color mode and the color grids. But before we do that, if you're new to this channel, make sure to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss a single new video. In the release of Rebel version 3.1, you can now go to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts and you can have more than one keyboard shortcut for a particular action. So for example, if I select File New, that's currently Control N, I can click the plus button now and I could have this be Alt N. So I can use both Control N and Alt N to create a new file. So if you're used to using applications other than Rebel that have different shortcuts than Rebel, you can add in those shortcuts as well. The next update is to the Reference Image panel. You can find that in the Window menu under Reference Image. You can place a reference image into the reference image panel. I'll just click here. I'll select my reference image and it appears in the panel. But what's new in Rebel 3.1 is the ability to go to file and save or save as, and that will save the reference image along with the .reb file format. So basically the image will be embedded into your document. That'll make the file size bigger, but it'll make sure that you don't have to always reload that reference image. Also new to the reference image panel is the ability to use touch to zoom in and out of your reference image. Now I can move my reference image around, but if I try to zoom, what's happening is it's actually zooming and rotating my canvas. Now I think that this is a bit of a bug and they will probably release version 3.1.5 point something and they'll fix that very soon because I don't think it's supposed to act that way. But basically you're supposed to be able to zoom in and out of your reference image using multi-touch. I'm gonna go ahead and just hold spacebar to move my reference image back into place. And if my canvas for some reason went way off screen, I can always go to view, fit to screen, and that'll put it back in the center. Also new in Rebel 3.1.5 is the ability to toggle off single touch and multi-touch independently of each other. So for example, you might be blending with your finger here like this to smudge your paint around, and then you might accidentally put down two fingers and zoom or rotate your canvas. So if you want more control over the multi-touch, you can now go to Edit, Preferences, and if we look under Tablet, you can see that we can enable and disable single touch and multi-touch independently. So I could disable multi-touch if I want. If I only want to be blending and I don't want to accidentally move my canvas around, there we go. Just as well, I could invert that and I can disable single touch and then I don't have to worry about accidentally blending when I'm trying to zoom or rotate. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's take a look at the game-changing HSL UV color mode and the color grid. So in my color panel here, I have this standard hue ring, which has all of the hues on it. And then the square in the center has value or brightness on the vertical axis and chroma or saturation on the horizontal axis. And you see this in most digital art applications. Sometimes it's a triangle instead of a square. And that's all fine and dandy, but the problem is that when you pick a color here, such as yellow, the brightness of this yellow when you change the hue is not going to be the same as the brightness of some of the other colors. So basically if I turn the hue wheel black and white, 
some of these hues would be lighter or darker than each other. So that means if I'm painting with, let's say, a yellow color like this, and then I switch to an orangey color like this, that orange might be quite a bit darker, and it wouldn't look natural. So let's go to the top right sub-dialog of the color picker, and instead of HSV, let's change it to HSLUV. Now you can see that the hue ring changes quite a bit. It looks a little bit duller in some places. So that means that this yellow here, if I put that down, will be equally as bright and saturated as the orangish color when I put that down. Now I use that technique to paint this banana here. You can see this green here fades into the yellow very nicely and naturally because the brightness of the hue is remaining constant. If you're interested in learning how to paint using this new feature, check out my tutorial where I paint this banana using this feature. Now in addition to viewing the hue on the circle here, which I feel is actually nice because then you can see complementary colors, you can also change it to square, and now you get the hue expressed on a strip here. So let's go ahead and test it and see how it works. I'm gonna start with this green color here. I'll put down some of this. I'll change the hue to a pinkish color. I'll put down some of that next to it. I'll switch to a yellow, and I'll put down some of that. And I'm making sure to only change my hue here. I'm not changing my value or my saturation. And let's go to Filter, Desaturate. Now you can see that for the most part, the value is quite similar. Now there are additional modes for displaying HSL in this square here. Right now we have a hue strip over on the right, but if we go to the top right sub-dialog, we can change that strip to display as saturation. Now we can control the saturation on the strip, and we can choose colors from within this panel here or we can change it to lightness. And now we have a lightness or value strip and we can make the color as bright or as dark as we want. Now the colors within the square here are going to remain relatively the same value or brightness. So I could choose this green and put down some green, or I could choose this blue and put down some blue, or even choose a yellow color and put down some of that. Then you can see that the lightness value is fixed and it's not changing regardless of which color I choose in the square. And now let's take a look at the next new feature, and that is the color grids. So let's go ahead and look in the top right sub-dialog under grid. And here we can subdivide our square that has saturation and value and the hue ring. So for the square, we can choose 9x9, 7x7, or 5x5, which gives you more or less subdivisions. Let's try 5x5, and you can see now, instead of seeing that huge range of colors, it's narrowed down to just a few swatches. If you're a traditional painter, you'll love this because it really simplifies color. It's a lot like how you'd mix color on your palette. You'd have just a few strings of color here. And it can also make painting a lot more efficient. Now, if that's too few colors, I can change that under grid to seven by seven, or I can change it to nine by nine, and then I get more or less divisions of color. So now that we're in grid mode, we can choose a color, let's say specifically this yellow here. I'm going to paint with this. And now if I change my hue to something else, let's say to a blue and maybe a green, and we go to filter, desaturate, you can see the brightness is much more uniform. If I change it back to HSV and we try that same trick, I'll put down a similar yellow color here and we'll change only the hue. I'll try to match the colors as best I can here. And if we go to filter, desaturate again, you can see that I changed only the hue, but there's a huge difference between these colors here. These are kind of a medium gray, this is a darker gray, and this is a lighter gray. You can see there's more consistency here in HSL UV if all I'm doing is shifting the hue. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my grid option. Let's go ahead and go to circle now, and let's use the grid to divide that. I'm gonna choose 36, and now I get 36 divisions here of my hue wheel. And again, this further simplifies the color. It makes it feel more like traditional paint where you have the different tubes of paint. It helps you better see some of the color harmonies. And it also limits your color a bit more to keep it more consistent. I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to HSL UV. And again, I can choose one of these green colors here, put some of that down, change to a completely different hue like this magenta, put some of that down, go down to this blue and put down some of that. And if I go to filter, desaturate, then again you can see those brightness values remain more consistent. So you can experiment with these different modes to see which you like better. You might like square better, you might like circle better, and you might like more or less divisions here. For example, on the hue ring here, I could have it just as 12, and then I have fewer hue options to choose from here. 
I prefer 7x7 seven seven for my square, and for the hue ring I prefer 36, and this is the format that I like. You'll also notice that if you move around the HSL sliders, it moves around in increments here in your grid. If you feel like you're kind of stuck with the colors that you have here, for example, you want a really bright yellow and you can't seem to get that, you can also just double click here on the color swatch and you can pick the bright yellow that you want and you can paint with that and add that in. So you're not limited to only painting with the colors that are available in the grid. You can really use any color you want, but if you want your colors to be consistent in brightness, then you might wanna stick with this HSL UV color mode and use the grid to your advantage. So this is a really awesome feature. I wish more art applications had something like this because it really makes painting a lot more intuitive and it just really simplifies things. You don't have to think about having a million colors on screen to pick from. You can narrow it down to a smaller number because ultimately that's what you're painting with anyways, is just a few color swatches. So there you go, that's a demonstration of the new features and updates available in Rebel version 3.1 and 3.1.5. Up next is my tutorial showing you how to paint a banana using HSL UV and the color grids. And look in the description of this video for more Rebel tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.